Welcome everyone, it's Anthony TD Jr. or Anthony the Dubstep Gamer. So now with the first bit of official info on Farina's kit being out, I'm going to go over it very quickly and simplify it because the descriptions were written by official. So I'm going to quickly go over her elemental skill, her elemental burst, her ascension passives, and gauge to see how good she might be. But without further ado, let's get started. Starting things off with her normal attack, she can apply between one of the two Arca alignments, which is Duma or Uja, because yes, she could use both of them. And to switch between both of them, she has to use her charge attack. She can apply the Arca damage every 6 seconds depending on which one you had at the moment. One thing to mention though is that the Arca damage that is applied from these normal attacks do not apply any units of Hydro. Now into arguably the most important part of her kit, the elemental skill. She can summon animals depending on her Uja and Numa alignment with a duration of 30 seconds and a cooldown of 20 seconds. If she's in the Uja state, she's going to deal Hydro damage and if she's in the Numa state, she'll start healing. It needs to be said that the Numa alignment healing does not apply any units of Hydro so the more useful alignment would be Uja. You could use it for healing, but as I'm going to explain later on in the video, she's heavily incentivized to be played with other healers, so it won't be that useful. Now when you first cast the elemental skill, it's going to do AoE Hydra damage based on her max HP. As previously stated, her elemental skill also summons three animals, a ball octopus, a seahorse, and an armored crab. The animals will attack nearby enemies at intervals, prioritizing the target of the active character, which the damage is based off Arena's max HP. When the creatures attack, if characters with more than 50% HP are nearby, they will lose HP but increase the summon's damage based on the number of characters who lost HP this way, which is a 10% HP decrease for the character. Now, there's no official info on how often these turrets attack off field, but all theory crafters and what I speculate as well is that it will be once every second for the three turrets. Now, obviously, since this part is just pure speculation, please take it with a grain of salt. These turrets could attack faster or slower, so we don't know. This obviously means that we won't be able to really accurately gauge how good she is going to be because we don't know the attack speed of her skill. But assuming that every one second per turret thing is true, then it's going to be pretty alright. We also don't know her ICD and elemental gauge of the turrets, but assuming it's one instance of Hydro every turret and that they don't have shared ICD, every turret should apply one instance of Hydro. Now, the elemental skill summon damage can alternate between 10, 5, and 15 percent of Farina's max HP and can increase up to 40% when your party is above 50% HP. This means the increase respectively will be up to 14%, 7%, and 20%. Now to put it into perspective, if we compare this damage to the next HP scaling off fielder like Yelon, the skill damage will be lower than Yelon's elemental burst, but since it's an elemental skill, it will be easier to get. And as previously stated, since Farina's elemental skill duration is 30 seconds with a 20 second cooldown, it is going to be very easy to get reliably 100% uptime. Now to explain if the elemental skill damage is AoE or not, the initial hit is, but since it hasn't been mentioned anywhere in the elemental skill that the other hits are AoE, they're most likely not going to be AoE. Now on to the next part of her kit, the elemental burst. It deals AoE Hydra damage based on max HP. All party members enter a state where if their HP changes, Farina gets stacks 1% HP change equals 1 stack. To explain it better, if a character loses 20% HP or gains 20% HP, Farina will get 20 stacks. At the same time, Farina increases party members damage and incoming healing based on Farina's stacks. When the duration ends, the stacks get cleared, a burst has a 70 energy cost and an 18 second duration. Now she does have a limit with the stacks, she has a maximum of 450 stacks. For each stack, it will be a 0.21% damage bonus and a 0.09% healing bonus. This means at 450 stacks, that will be a 94.5% damage bonus or almost a 95% damage bonus. Now this damage bonus is going to be bigger because we don't have the numbers for the crown, but I'm going to assume around 100% damage bonus. Well, that's a lot of damage bonus, however there's a big issue and that's because 450 stacks is really unreliable to get. For instance, you don't start getting stacks before using Farina's elemental burst and 450% HP is a shit ton of HP. Your characters would have to be dying and healing all the way back up for that. Now assuming again that the skill hits 1% second per creature, you'll get a 40% HP drain from each teammate with the skill, which is 160 stacks, and if it heals back up, that's another 160 stacks, which is 320 stacks. That's great and all, but you're not going to start with lower HP, you're going to start with 100% HP, so for the first rotation, you'll start at 0 stacks and you'll gain the stacks over time. And if you heal by the end of the duration, you'll have short uptime with the high amount of stacks. So you might want to hold off and start your healing at the second rotation so that you can get more uptime with the high amount of stacks. Now this kit is going to synergize pretty well with characters that 
can reliably drain their own HP like Nouvellet or a Bloom Team or any other character that could drain their own HP. In Nouvellet's case, he can consume and heal about 50% of his own HP every charge attack. Since most of the time he's gonna do 3 charge attacks per rotation, he'll get 300 stacks. Pair that with the HP drain from Farina's abilities and you basically get full stacks. Now for other HP draining characters, it's gonna be harder to get uptime on this, especially Hu Tao. People are gonna think that this synergy is like really great, but the thing is Hu Tao teams don't generally run a healer, so you're not gonna get much stacks in terms of the healing part of it. The first rotation will just be like okay, but the second rotation you don't get any healing or anything, so you're not getting that much stacks, so the, all the damage bonuses you could have gotten are lost. And if you try to force a healer, it's not even gonna be that great, because if you try to put Bennett, he's a single target healer, and you don't really want to on-field anybody else but Hu Tao during that time so you don't waste the attack bonus, so he won't get you that many stacks, and then you'll eventually get more HP so then Hu Tao's damage bonus is a little bit lost. If you try to run Jean, you're not gonna be able to get that many Pyro Swirls often because there are two Hydro units, so you're gonna have to do a VV Vape, but it's not that great with the uptime. You do risk overhealing even with all the HP draining mechanics in play. So that means when you're building teams with Farina in mind, you gotta think, how many stacks am I gonna get? How reliably am I gonna get these stacks and how much will I benefit? Let's take a quick look at the Ascension passives. The Ascension 1 passive is when the active character receives healing, if the source of healing is not Farina and the healing overflows, Farina will heal a nearby party member for 2% of their max HP once every 2 seconds within the next 4 seconds. It says it only heals one nearby party member, not all of it. I don't know if it's random or if it's only the active character, we have to find out later, but I'm gonna assume it's the active character. It's alright, it's not the biggest deal though. On to the 4th Ascension passive, every 1000 points of Farina's max HP can buff her skill summons. Damage by 0.7% up to a maximum of 28%. Decrease active character healing interval by 0.4% up to a maximum of 16%. Now if you pair this with other parts of Farina's kit, it makes it so that her best artifact set is the Golden Troop set to maximize the skill damage. And with the amount of damage percent she's getting, it's better to actually run an HP goblet than a Hydro Damage goblet because you're getting so much damage bonus. Now it's not the biggest difference between the two, so if you have a broken Hydro Damage bonus goblet, it could be better than the HP goblet, but most of the time it's going to be the HP goblet. Overall, I think Farina has a very interesting kit. She's not outright better than every Hydro character, but she's not trash either. She has pretty good broken abilities that are good in certain situations. And she makes use of some characters that weren't really used that much before, like she works pretty well with Baiju. That's gonna be all with this video. If I get any more info, I'll be sure to update you guys, but feel free to subscribe to my channel as I very much so appreciate it. But as always, take care and have a great day.